Happy Sabbath, early teens. Happy Sabbath, juniors. Today we want to talk about one of my favorite topics. It's about kindness. I could say it's my favorite because kindness is something that, when it's expressed towards me, I feel excited and it makes me feel good. And I'm sure you feel the same way. So today we're going to talk about kindness. And um, I'm sure we all know what kindness means. It's being thoughtful, uh, being... Um, nice and just being friendly to others doing something that is that is special and kindness requires sacrifice because sometimes we have to forget about ourselves in order to be kind we may not feel about being kind but we do it because we know how it makes us feel so we do it so at this time I want us to um, open to the lesson number 11 random acts of kindness in our um, real-time faith lesson for our early teens and we're talking about kindness today but before we start i want to open with a word of prayer dear heavenly father we praise you so much for being a good kind and loving thoughtful faithful and merciful god thank you for loving us despite of who we are thank you for being faithful to us even when we're not to ourselves Sometimes we're not even kind to ourselves, but you continuously extend your grace, mercy, and kindness towards us. Thank you for being that father. And Lord, at this time where school's about to start and or have started and changes have been, school is different. It may be virtual or in class, but no longer can we hug the way we used to and do the things we used to. So we're asking you to hold us and keep us close to you so we may feel your presence and your love near us. Thank you for each individual boy and girl here and their families. Help us to grow closer and closer to you and help us through this difficult time. May we always know that you're just a prayer away. Thank you for being there for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, once again, the lesson is about random acts of kindness. And why I'm particularly excited about this lesson is because I've asked some young persons to talk to me and tell me about some verses in the Bible that they think of when they think about kindness. And there's so many verses in the Bible that talk about kindness. And kindness is a way of speaking in ways that words cannot. So imagine when we are kind, it extends greater than our words. Because sometimes we could say all nice things, but as you young people know, kindness is an action word. Kindness is something we do. So even when we're kind, um, it doesn't, it may not necessarily have to use words. It's a way that words cannot explain. And that's the power of kindness. You cannot be considered a kind person without demonstrating kind acts of mercy, grace, and helping others. Kindness causes us to feel value. Kindness will cost something though. It could be your time, your reputation, money, and even pride. There was an example of a girl who was about to go play with her friends, and then she saw her neighbor who was struggling to clean her yard, and this was an older lady. And for a moment, she was like, oh. She thought about it and she decided to help her neighbor. That was a very kind act to do, and a great sacrifice because she wanted to enjoy the time with her friends. So kindness, um, it is extensive over time and our pride sometimes. Um, today's lesson, in today's lesson, I have asked some young people to give some examples, some Bible verses about kindness, and also to tell about an act of kindness either they've extended to others or someone has extended to them so we will do that and we will also have a sister rosemary who will give us some encouragement because when we go back to school when and some of us already have as i said before and um, not just us but our parents and our teachers we're concerned about what is to what we should expect what is to happen to us our safety. Are we going to be sick? Are we going to get sick? 
So these are things that concern us. So we have Sister Rosemary who is going to offer us a word of encouragement and we're going to hear some young people talk about kindness today. So enjoy. Uh, that wonderful introduction. It is my pleasure to speak to the tweens or the teens. Your 11 year olds, maybe your 17 year olds. And so a little bit about myself. Uh, my career began in mental health and I did some pretty um, interesting things there. And then I went on to work for the Urban League. And then I worked for a number of years as a welfare director. After which I got a really nice promotion and um, I became a human service director and I was responsible for um, supervising the following departments, rent leveling, property maintenance, uh, recreation, the Department of Health. And we know that that's really big in the news right now and um, division on aging. And I worked also as a team member for emergency management. So yes, I would be in the bubble when an emergency occurred and you hear all the calls coming in and, and calls that uh, EMS are responding to. And then I participated in what was called Top Off 3. And Top Off 3 involved um, looking at a state and the state we looked at was the state of New Jersey. And in the event of a pandemic, or a terrorist attack, how you successfully moved people from point A to point B, uh, what what pods were, developing pods. And, um, and so my life work has actually been looking at people and um, helping them to become their best selves. And so uh, the youngest person that I've worked with has been a four and a half year old. And the oldest, probably 99 years old, or maybe a little older than that. And so I have a length of experience working with, um, with people who find themselves in all kinds of settings and places. And so it was my pleasure to talk to Sister Scott this Wednesday. And she wanted me to talk with um, you all about being safe, feeling safe, feeling empowered during this pandemic season. And we're all a little stressed. We're all a little anxious. But what is it that we can do so that we can continue to feel safe? So <clears throat> I want to kind of remind you that the World Health Organization says there's no health without mental health. No health without mental health. I went to the um, Mental Health Institute and they have reminded us that our children and our teens get influenced by the authority figures in their lives, reactions to trauma. So what is it that we need to do? Well, um, I want to remind you that there are two types of mindsets. There is a positive mindset or a negative mindset. My sister-in-law likes to refer to them as a fertilized mindset or a herbicide mindset. So if we're thinking of seeds, if you plant them in a fertilized mindset, good things happen. The seeds grow and they become whatever it was intended for that seed to be. If we put seeds in a herbicide mindset, not too much is going to happen there. Seeds is going to die and they're going to disappoint us. And so when we begin to think of our mind as either positive or negative, we think of our mind as being a fertilized place or a herbicide place, then we determine what happens. If we have a um, fertilized mindset, positive things are happening. We see possibilities everywhere. If we have a herbicide mindset, we're tending to feel sad, Moody, we don't see possibilities. 
And so the challenge is how do we shift our mindset from being a herbicide to a fertilized mindset? And whatever it is that works for us as the authority figures, the parents love us through us, children, youth, teens, through this um, pandemic season helps our minds to shift from negative to positive. So the challenge to you all is, what is it that you can do? Well, maybe you can write down this positive statement and you read to yourself that positive statement several times a day, nine o'clock, 12 o'clock, three o'clock, five o'clock, whatever it is that works for you. And you're reinforcing, you know, this is gonna pass. Or, you know, I look good today. I am safe today. My parents are the best. They're doing the best they can for me. We will make it through this season. Whatever positive statements you can jot down, repeat to yourself, or write a positive song, or get involved with arts and crafts that you love, or new arts and crafts experience. Learn to paint, learn to draw, learn to do wood carving, learn to knit, learn to sew. The idea is to move our negative experience to more positive experiences. And as we do that, that changes our mindset. And if we have a positive mindset, we have positive attitudes. Because mindsets drive our behavior. So it's the goals, parents, guardians, teens, tweens, that each and every day we have a positive mindset. And when we have a positive mindset, positive things happen. And so that's my word of encouragement to you today. And um, at this point, I'd like to pray for you. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, it's an awesome responsibility to be parents, guardians, teachers during this season when there's fear all around because of the pandemic, Black Lives Matter, and even the elections. And Father, there are teenagers right now who don't want to talk about Black Lives Matter, who don't want to talk about the pandemic, who don't want to talk about the elections because they feel so overwhelmed and so anxious with everything that's going on. But Father, we want to thank you that you have given us hope. You have given us encouragement. You have given us positive things that we can look at that can change our mindset, which will affect our attitude. And so, Father, I ask that you will remind us each and every day that we can choose to be happy or we can choose to be sad. And help us, Father, that we will choose to be happy. We will choose to see possibilities everywhere. And we will choose to remember that we have a loving Father who is always interceding on our behalf, always rooting for us, that we will become our best selves and that we will be successful. So we thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, I'm Cindy from Barbados living in New Zealand. Um, and I'm weighing in on the Acts of Kindness day today. My scripture passage is Luke chapter 6, verse 35. It says, love your enemies, lend and reward, expecting nothing in return. And it goes on to say that our Heavenly Father will bless us. Um, my acts of kindness story is three stories, really. The first one did not happen to me. It happened to a flatmate of mine. He walked into a Burger King. His sandwich literally fell on the ground as soon as he had received it from the cashier and it just you know fell apart and a random stranger someone he did not know walked up to him 
comforted him was like literally putting his hands around him because he was really upset about it struggling student he was and pretty much said i'll get you another burger and he rushed to the cashier bought the same burger that had been spilled on the floor and gave it to my flatmate i was i was in shock i had just gotten to new zealand about two weeks in and that was an act of kindness that was shown um another act of kindness this one happened to me where someone sent to me an amount of money unsolicited by me i did not ask them for it and it came at a time when i was at my lowest financially it just showed up um and i was able to go and collect it did not expect anything in return the third act of kindness is one that happened last night and you might say these are little things but they absolutely made my day little things make my day i was coming from the supermarket and i had a paper bag with my groceries because you know plastic bags are out and i walked outside and the bag broke and all my groceries just ran all over the floor the car part really and this couple they just came up to me and just started picking up my groceries because i'm just there in shock and embarrassment right i'm in the middle of a car park cars are coming everything they picked up my groceries and they're like right where's your car we'll walk you to your car the thing is is that the rain was pouring and everyone was running past me through the rain to their cars but this couple stopped picked up my stuff when i was in shock and then asked me where's your car i walked my stuff to the car and put them in my trunk I hope that you are inspired by these total strangers. Some are Christians, some are not. They don't seem to be big deeds to you, but to me those deeds spoke a lot and I appreciated them and I accepted them as blessings from God. So I hope you are inspired by this. Have a good Sabbath, have a good day. Hi, my name is Sarah and my name is Mary. And we're from Brazil. Today we'll be doing a Bible reading on kindness. I will be doing that. I will be reading from Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. You are God's chosen people. You are holy and dearly loved. So put on tender mercy and kindness as if they were your cloak. Don't be proud. Be gentle and patient. We'll be reading from Corinthians 13, verse 4. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud. One, one kind act I have done would be when I went to the homeless shelter to cook and serve food to the people. I felt happy that I served food and the people there were thankful. One kind act that I have done was when I saw a man outside asking for help outside of the store. So we went inside the store and got him some clothes and some food. He was very thankful and he felt very good after doing so. Thanks. Hello everyone, my name is Sime, and today I'll be reading you a passage from Growing With God about kindness, titled Choosing Kindness. Love is patient, love is kind. 1 Corinthians 13.4 We know that kindness is always best. But if you're feeling sad or angry, you might not feel like caring for anyone else. Still, God tells us to love one another all the time. And that means acting kind even when you don't feel like it. But here's the secret. When you do a kind act, you'll start to feel a little love. The more kind things you do, the more love you will feel. Try it out. You'll be surprised how your feelings can change when you choose kindness. Let's pray. Dear God, help me choose kindness all the time. I want to love like you love. And thank you for all that you've done for me. Amen. A kind act can be small. Who is someone you can show kindness to today? Think about it. Hello again, young early teens and preteens. I hope you've enjoyed our program about kindness today, and I hope you've heard and really feel the special message that Sister um, Rosemary has extended to us and remind us that God is there and for the prayer, beautiful prayer. 
um, I would like to thank all the participants, especially the young people that have decided to take the time. And I know it's uncomfortable being on video because sometimes I am too. And to share what God's word have taught us and some of our experiences about kindness. Um, there's some in New York and there's Tatum and Miles in Virginia. I want to thank you guys so much. Um, I was hoping to get my friend in New Zealand I'm um, not sure if she'll come on, but I am thankful to all the participants for being um, able to share their experience about kindness. I want to you guys to remember, we will always be praying for you. We're just a phone call away, but just always know we'll be praying for you because um, we love our young people. I miss your hugs so much. We miss your little smiles, your smiles, and your greetings, and I know those things keep us feeling special, but I, I pray, my pray also is that God will help you to feel his presence near you and to know that you are not forgotten, even at a th time like this. So at this time, I'm going to close off again with a word of prayer, and just know that we should spend some time each day with God, asking Him to go before you, and you will see the difference your day will make. And I want us all to do an experiment, and that will be to do something kind for someone else. It, not, it doesn't always just make them feel good. It makes you feel good, too. So, it is important not only to tell about God's love to others, but show them with their kind actions and words that God cares for each and every one of us. Please don't forget that. So let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you time and time again for being there for us, for loving us, for keeping us, for protecting us, for providing for us, for sheltering us. I want to ask you to be with each young person. Be with them, and if they're in school virtually, May they feel your presence. May they not feel alone. May you find ways of creative ways for them to extend to others with others. Because you created us to be social beings. Work things out so that they may feel you and they may get to experience others in their surroundings. May we not forget to smile and be kind and be thoughtful of others. Lord, help us to trust you as this world continuously changes. Be with each and every one of these young people again and again. And may they know that we will continuously pray for them. Help us to always think about them and to pray for them also. Because we are busy. But never help us never to be too busy for them. Thank you again for hearing our prayer. And may they be blessed. Them and their household and their families. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again, boys and girls. And take care. Be safe. And remember talk to God every day and don't forget to tell him thank you for his kindness to you. Amen.